The Jets and the Giants should absolutely be all in by today's 4 p.m. trade deadline here, Sal. And, and the funny thing about this is they should both have the same mindset with very different approaches. The Jets should be buying. The Giants should be selling. There should be no one between. Giants started selling. That was a great trade. We'll get to that. It's a great start. They need to continue this. And I'll tell you what. If I am Joe Douglas right now, I don't care how crazy this sounds. I'm already talking to the Raiders. You can have my first round pick. I want Devontae Adams. All in. Go for it. See, I think that's a mistake for the Jets. I'm not saying you can't upgrade, and, and I'm not even saying that I wouldn't go after Devontae Adams, but I don't really believe Devontae Adams makes the Jets a Super Bowl contender. I think their issue is the quarterback. So I understand trying to upgrade. You know, Sala talked about it, trying to get an offensive line or help on the offensive line. Nobody's trading those guys, which shows you how valuable good offensive linemen are. I mean, is it realistic to think a disgruntled Devontae Adams could be here? I don't think it's unrealistic because, you know, Aaron Rodgers is pulling the string somewhere. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't he want to be teamed up? So that would be a, I mean, that's a huge, huge trade if the Jets were able to lure Devontae Adams. But with Zach Wilson, I don't think they're going to be able to take advantage of it. Well, it's also a huge, huge opportunity. You know, we've dissected this a million times. The Chiefs, they look vulnerable. The Bills don't appear to be the same team some people thought they would be coming in. You know, Miami's obviously very powerful, but let's see what happens when it gets a little chilly. Yeah, the Bengals are on the come, but you know, they're, they're not without flaw. Like, to me, there's a window here for the for the Jets to, to not only, you know, really go all in and, and, and try to – steal a Super Bowl appearance, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not cavalier. And what I mean by that is, like, there's moves that just seem ridiculous, like, years ago. Uh, I don't even know if you remember this. You're a little bit younger. But the Knicks traded Mo traded for Mo Cheeks. He was, like, 39, 40 years old. The old point guard who played right. with Dr. J. And Moses. I remember who he is. I don't okay. remember the trade. And they gave up Rod Strickland, right. who was, like, 23 and Rod sick. Strickland. It was, a, it was a wizard, right? Shout out to Rod. Rod, Rod could boys coaching now. Rod was uh, amazing. Short-sighted trade. I think of Rod trickling with the Blazers more than I do Knicks. Yeah, well, he wasn't here long. He right. was part of the bomb right. squad. They got rid of went to DePaul, New York City kid. But they, that was a short-sighted move. The the Knicks were fooled. Like, we get Mo Cheeks here, that veteran proud. We can, what, nah, 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 it was the wrong move. And it was too risky. See, even if the Jets don't, if they do get Adams, and again, I'll give up a first-round pick for him. I swear to God I will. And even if it doesn't work out, would you give up more? Would you I give up, give up more, like a more, one and a three? Nah, you're not getting one and a three. You're getting one. And otherwise, well, I mean, what if somebody else wants Devontae Adams more? I mean, the Jets don't need a number one receiver. They need a number two receiver. I, but I don't think they even have like a third receiver. Like they, know, their but, receivers are awful right, outside of Garrett Wilson. That's what I mean. They don't need a top guy. Now I'm not saying you turn that away. Yeah. But, but for you, is it Adams or Bust, or could you get somebody else in there? I mean, look, there are going to be other options to find a. I don't wide know. I, how many? I, what are the options? How many other receivers out there are as disgruntled? Did you see Devontae Adams on national TV right. last night? Jimmy Garoppolo threw for 119 yards. Right. I mean, as much as people complain about Zach Wilson, Zach's been better. You know, so. I think Adams wants out, and and this is why it's not, it's not. Again, I've used the word cavalier. It's not cavalier. Yeah, first round pick. How do you do that mid season trade? I'll tell you why. Because number one, it might actually work out this year with Zach, or if Rodgers comes back. And even if it doesn't work out this year, you know he's under contract next year. And like, listen, Sal, I'll tell you, if the Jets had a roster. That was like aging. That's why I love what the Giants did with Leonard Williams. He's 30 years old. You know, they, they've got some big boys up front. Dexter Lawrence is great. We know about Okereke rounding into form. Thibodeau had a great game Sunday. Let's see if this is a foreshadow the next uh, whatever he becomes. He's been spot good in, in certain spots. He has not been this. I right. mean, what we saw Sunday was uh, we've never seen that quite from Kayvon and by Thibodeau. The way, so. a, a part of that, and I'm not trying to take away from his big game, but a part of that was Zach Wilson holding on the football a million – I, like, way longer than he should Yeah, have. and I mean, some of the film backed that up. But yeah. he was such a disruptive force. You, you know, I, you're not wrong. I, I looked at the same film. But, you know, nine tackles, three sacks. He no, was he was great. a beast. He was, he, he was an absolute beast. And, by the way, did you see the offsides? It I might, did. He was not offsides. Yeah, so there you go. I, Just, I, we didn't make a big deal of it yesterday. Yeah. But... I mean, I think he had a good gripe there. Giants, the Giants got, got hosed. They got hosed at the end, well, yeah. I think, with the spotting of the ball. And, and then apparently with the with the Kayvon Thibodeau offsides, which was not at offsides. But, like, when you have somebody, and it's such a stark contrast to the Giants. Like, the Jets, if you just tune it in, get every, like make massive trades. Take the swing. Do not tell me 
that it's not worth our first. How many how many picks have the Jets had over the years that we held on to like the whole diamond All right, so first that and never third. materialized? Giving, Just go for you're it. You're giving up a first and a third then. I'm giving right. up a first for Devontae Adams, sure. Well, if you're going to go all in, what if I'm the Raiders and I say, yeah, you could have him, you got to give me a third round pick as well. Well, here's the th- is there somebody else out there that's willing to give up a first and a fourth and a first let's and a play, third? Let's then play you the know game. what? Whatever. Okay. Let, let me refresh. Whatever it takes to make it happen, there you go. we got a deal. There you I'm go. I'm all in. You're all in. And I'm all in on the Giants. Selling because the Giants, you know, and that's why I, I love what they did. Yes, I loved. I said that they should do this. They did it. And I listen. The Giants pulled kind of a page from the Mets playbook. They basically bought a draft pick. They assumed most of the nine million dollars for Leonard next year. They got a two and a five. Seattle satisfies. They're chasing it. Hey, if Seattle could go for it, which they are, right. why can't the Jets go for it? Man, how many picks does Seattle have? I don't dude? know. I mean, they keep giving away these top picks. It's crazy. What to New York doing. teams, they keep giving them too. Yeah, why not? Lucky the Russell Wilson trade. They uh, they got it back the true. other way. But anyway. Yeah, I love that trade from the Giants' perspective. Now, I hate losing a player like Leonard Williams. I think he's been an impactful player, but you knew he wasn't going to be part of the future. Yeah. And the fact that, like, if you were to tell me, and we discussed this yesterday before the trade went down, and we thought maybe, like, a fourth or fifth round pick for Leonard Williams, I was like, eh. But the fact that they got a number two and a number five, you know, next year, the number two, that oh, for Leonard Williams? That's uh, amazing. Yeah, you're paying for a pick. I love that move from Joe Shane and the Giants. But it should just be the beginning. I would be open to anything other than trading Saquon Barkley. I'm not doing that. I would do that. That that's how it, I wouldn't give him away to be clear, but that's how I am that's that's how deeply I'm invested in the mindset for both of these teams. The Jets have a chance to do something this year. Go for it. The Giants season is basically over. Reset the right way, you know, pile up those assets and continue to listen. If Shane pulled off that kind of a trade with somebody who's 30 and contracts about to expire, you know, what could you get for a McKinney? What could you get for some of these players? I, I am. This should be a massive trade day for the Jets and the right, Giants. But, it really should be. But you just can't tear it down like that Why and not? have nothing left. Like, I get that the wins, losses don't mean anything as far as this year goes. Giants aren't going to make the postseason. We know that. Will they be better off having a higher pick? Of course. But what about the players in the locker room? What about trying to build... A culture. You trade Saquon Barkley, you are taking away the heart and soul. Not to mention what it does to Daniel Jones, who will be back this week. I want to actually see what Daniel Jones can do with an improved offensive line that we've seen over the last few weeks. And with Saquon Barkley back being healthy, where Tyrod Taylor had more success than Daniel Jones has this year. I want to see what that looks like. I'm not trading Saquon Barkley because it does too many things negative to to impact this team as opposed to the third-round pick that you might get, if that. In return, I just don't think the the value is back for Saquon Barkley. All right, 877-337-6666. BT and Sal on the fan. Happy Halloween, everybody. By the way, who are you dressed up as today? Well, I lost the bet, obviously. I thought the Giants were going to win, and they let me down and lost to your Jets. So I dressed up as you. Oh, I clean shaved today a little bit my face. It feels weird. I haven't done that in a while. And I got a nice turtle <laughs> turtleneck. A turtleneck. <laughs> now I realize how stupid I look when I'm wearing the turtleneck. <laughs> It doesn't look that bad on you, though. Well, it really doesn't. I also don't thing. think it looks that bad on me, but nobody really seems to agree with no, that. I don't think it looks all... I mean, turtlenecks in general are odd, but, I mean, yeah, I feel uh, like you today. I mean, we look similar anyway. Yeah, Didn't yeah. have to really adjust the haircut. No, Just the no. face. I shaved the face a little bit, and here we go. All right, well, listen, it is a Halloween, so hopefully everybody's ready for a good day and a lot of fun, and uh, the Jets should dress up as contenders because they are, which means they should take massive swings and they should be kicking every tire, every prominent receiver, any offensive lineman you can get your hands on. You go for it. Conversely, Giants point of view, great start yesterday. Collect as much equity as you possibly can. Trust smart men, Shane, Dable to rebuild this the right way. All right, rinse out of our Town Fair Tire Studio. Friends of Town Fair remind you that you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire no, buddy. First up, Charlie and Beth Page, BT and Sal, all the fan. Charlie, how are you today, pal? What's happening? Uh, BT, Sal, very good. Enjoyed the show yesterday. Love it after a Jet win. Might have been the ugliest win in the history of the Jets, but a win is a win in the NFL, and I'll take it. But yep. it was very ugly. But Devontae Adams, the body language out in L.A., not L.A., Las Vegas, uh, is brutal. We need him. It will make Zach Wilson a better quarterback. It will open up things for Garrett Wilson. 
And if they want to put the, everybody on those two, then we hit our tight ends. We got multiple tight ends. It will open up our offense. But we had to have the coach open up the offense because that was a disgrace this weekend with the play calling. They should have came right out of the gate after a bye week. Charlie, do you want to make a trade or no? Yes, I want the trade. I want to have Vontae Adams on the Jets. He can be back with Rodgers next year, and it will make this team a better team this year for our run for the playoffs because we're going to the playoffs. Sal, you don't think we're going to the playoffs? We're going to the playoffs, baby. Not a boy, Charlie. Go. You let him yeah, know, Charlie. Yeah, no, I don't think it's Tell him. I also don't defense. think Devontae Adams is the difference either. Whether it's Super Bowl, whether it's playoffs, I don't think he makes that big of a difference. Are I'm not you saying crazy. Devontae Adams? Dude, you guys sat here and told me the same thing about me call Hardman and Dalvin Cook. But they didn't Cook. play him. No, okay. Dalvin well, Cook is shot. Was my fault? Well, no, but Dalvin Cook is shot. Well, we were on the day he after shot. he signed. Or that morning we signed. I was like, ah, I don't like this move. No, so you didn't to... like it. I agree. I'll give you that. But All he right. shot. And uh, Okay, he shot. So Joe, uh, so Joe Douglas made a mistake. Yeah. He Doesn't mean he's going to make it up. You, do you think Devontae Adams is physically shot? No, I don't. Okay, I think then that's stuck. not the Dalvin Cook situation. I, I understand that, but I'm, I'm just saying that I don't think that they – look, those guys are supposed to help the offense. I don't think – and they obviously didn't. One didn't even play with Michael Hartman. Joe Douglas brought them in, not me. He did. There was supposed to be an imp- – look, if Michael Hartman did what he was supposed to do, we wouldn't be clamoring for Jets go, go, to go get another receiver. They don't need – Devontae Adams because they have Garrett Wilson who was supposed to be the next Devontae Adams. Yeah, but here's the problem with this with this Jets offense. I got news for you. Even I know Sunday was not a reflection of that. Even as you look at when they're healthy now, last couple of weeks with Hyatt, more so before this past week again with the rain. Like the Giants offense to me, their Giants receivers are better than the Jets collection of receivers. Laz- I saw a stat yesterday. No Laz- way. You want uh, Lazard? has a 19% drop rate. That is abysmal. The guy's never open, which means you could pretty much double Garrett Wilson. Well, who brought him here? Well, Joe Douglas. No, but, but, but really. But well, really, well, well, Rodgers, of course. Okay. No, I got you, but that doesn't mean you stop doing things just because Aaron Rodgers is hurt. Right, let me ask you. Do you think Garrett Wilson, who was supposed to be the next Devontae Adams, is not because of him or because of losing Aaron Rodgers? I think it's a multitude of factors. I think that... Number one, maybe we're a little quick saying that he's Devontae Adams. I mean, Devontae Adams is basically as good as we've seen, and I think Garrett Wilson's amazing. I think we're sometimes a little quick to speed up young players' mm-hmm. you know, growth curve, so maybe we're a little ambitious there. Don't get me wrong. Garrett's a beast, but he's, you know, let's give him another year or so. Um, you know, the O-line issues there. Jack's been a little bit all over the place. Well, like, the Hackett play calls. I think there's reasons why... Uh, plus, I think he's double team. Nobody's getting separation outside of him. Garrett Wilson's not really. He, but come he has on. no you, help. You, you know the truth. The reality is that if Aaron Rodgers were playing quarterback, Garrett Wilson would be a top receiver in this league. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Would he be Devontae Adams? Maybe not, but maybe he would. Okay, so. And also, BT, we yep. talked about this you know, through training camp or, or preseason, I should say, on in the regular season as we started doing shows together. Nobody ever said that the biggest issue, we talked about offensive line. Jets need help on the offensive line. Nobody ever said they need help with wide receivers. Why is that the case? Well, because Corey Davis retired. That nah, hurt. No, 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 no that, hold on. That hurt. Now, he's never more than, I'm not going to make him out to be more than he was. He was I'm, always dropping balls, too. Not Corey like Lazard like no, at 90%. I know, but the point is. Now, Corey Davis is a big, thick-bodied, smart, you know, good blocking, mm-hmm. strong, fairly, good fairly short hand. Yes. I get it. Great, but, really good number two. But nobody was making a huge deal about the wide receivers because the way the quarterback plays, you figure out they'll be fine. He's got his guys in there, yeah. Lazard, even Cobb. They brought in Hardman with Garrett Wilson. It wasn't really, even with Davis retiring, and I know that some, maybe you and I discussed it too, like, ah, we shouldn't be overlooking this retirement by Corey Davis, but it wasn't like it was a glaring need. And I think the reason it's become a glaring need is because of the quarterback. Well, yeah, I don't I don't see it that way. I, I Without fully exonerating the quarterback, I think to me it's, it's a continuation of philosophy. Will you admit that, when you go and get a 39-year-old future Hall of Fame quarterback, it's an all-in move. Yes. Okay. So why would you stop being all-in now? Because you don't have that quarterback. But you will have him next year. And you might right, have so him this year. About next, uh, by the way, well, you I, might have him this I, year. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying don't get Devontae Adams. I'm okay. fine with that. Even if you give up a one and a three, I'm okay with that. Oh. But I don't think it's going to make a difference this year. Got it. Okay. I got you on that. We disagree. Patty's in uh, Melville on the fan with BT and South Patrick. What's happening, buddy? Hey guys, how you doing? Hey. Uh, just up, so, real, real quick, um, so 
Sal, are you like on a Daniel Jones pick? What, what, what is this every time? Oh, I want to see what Daniel Jones. It's done. We need to trade Saquon Barkley. We need to just rebuild. I don't, I don't know what, what there is to say anymore. The Jets lost kind of pretty much sealed our fate, and it's just time to move on, and let's go on to the draft. On to Caleb Williams. That's what we, gotta, that's what we have to do. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't do that, but you want to trade Barkley and you don't believe in Daniel Jones. That's fine. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I disagree. I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's been five. The, the constant with all the coaches has been Daniel Jones. I mean, if I hear one more person about last, last year was an aberration. Nine and seven was not a great year. It was a mediocre year, and they beat a crappy team in the, in the uh, Minnesota Vikings. If we're going to keep hanging our hats on that, that nonsense, we're never going to go forward. That's just the way it is. Well, I don't think the Giants are hanging their hats on that, and thank you for the call. But I do believe the Giants are believers in Daniel Jones. I mean, if they didn't believe in Daniel Jones, why not just not bring him back after last year? They could have said, BT, what the caller just said, hey, you know what? We weren't as good as our record said. We beat a crappy team in the postseason. This was an aberration. Let's just move on now from Daniel Jones and start to think about our next quarterback. I can't prove this, but being so new in town, I think that they were a little swayed by public sentiment. What about ownership? Who oh, you yeah. Know loves oh, oh, yeah. Jones. You know, that's absolutely part of the equation. Uh, yes, yes. So I think there were a lot of forces at play. You know, if the Giants had been consistently solid for the last decade rather than a complete train train wreck like the Jets, you know, I think there be there would have been more recent fan equity. Not that fans don't love the team, but let's face it, you know, the Giants were, were awful. I mean, for a long time outside of last year. So I think the fact that the owners flexed, the fact that they were new in town and they stumbled, not stumbled, but they had a really um, a really impressive first year that, that lit a, a fire in the fan base. I, I think it would have been almost impossible to turn away from that, even if it was the right move. Right. And by the way, I didn't say it was the wrong move signing him. I'm just saying that if they, the team, didn't believe in Jones, then yeah. they shouldn't have brought him back, even if for just two years at $40 million a year. Yeah, but I think that you can believe in something – Maybe not with full, wholehearted conviction, but you believe in it enough to make a decision based on that belief, and then shortly thereafter, change your mind. You think they've changed their minds? Uh, I think they might be in the process. Well, certainly well, why, with the injury, I think they're terrified. But why can't they still be evaluating him, which is what we're going to do now? Well, the that's where we're pa- evaluating for how long? Till he's 35 uh, uh, years old? When uh, does the evaluation look, end? I'm with you, but off of last year, I, I understand it. I had him written off after la- going into last season. I was done. And then he went out there and proved me wrong. What am I supposed to do? Not wait, acknowledge that? Like, wait, no, no, you, you could say they overachieved and it wasn't like legitimate, but they did. I yeah. mean, they got to the postseason because of Daniel Jones. So if they did that with no talent on that team in year one of Joe Shane and Brian Dable, yep. why wouldn't I think that Daniel Jones could take them even further with a better team around him. Well, th- again, I think that that mindset was fine back then. I just think it needs to be really adjusted based on... Well, how many weeks did he play this year? So now we're going to adjust it on that? five games. Okay. No, and, but when he played, he was awful. Well, uh, agreed, but how many of them with Andrew Thomas and how many of them with Saquon Barkley? He played with Saquon more than not, number one. Andrew Thomas basically played half oh, the game. Was out. Barkley was there for two weeks. Um, okay, so Wasn't he played. He he played the, uh, let me game. see. He, he didn't play the Niners game, so right, I guess he played about week three. So um, the first two games. So he played forty percent of the year with Barkley. Last year he played the entire year with Barkley. He played I mean, two I, games this year with Barkley. I'm saying, he, but he's played five. So right. of the five games he's played, two with, have been with Barkley. So forty percent. Listen, I, I give you. It's, it's not a perfect and, circumstance. And by the way, one of them they won. I know it's hard to imagine, but yeah, I mean they got blown out in the Cowboy game. They, they beat the Cardinals, even though it wasn't a great effort from start to finish, obviously. It was one half of football that was awful, one half that was good. But they won that game. I mean, they were 1-1 one one with Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley together, right? Yes. And then week three was the Niner game. Barkley was out. And then Daniel Jones ends up getting hurt after that. Uh, so, understood. But he also had other years where he was with Barkley and they weren't well, good. And uh, he wasn't agreed. good. It's not but, like this is year two in Daniel Jones' career. For it's been me, around a while. For me this year... After what Jones did last year, this year was supposed to be about seeing if he could take his game to the next level, meaning throwing the football. Mm -hmm. They brought in weapons, whether it's Waller, whether it's drafting Hyatt. They were supposed to throw the football. Robinson healthy. There you go. Robinson coming back healthy. We have not seen that. No. In part because Jones has been hurt, but also in part because he he wasn't doing it when he was healthy. But we're eight weeks in. He's been hurt for a bunch of them. Now that they're getting healthy with Barkley back, with Jones returning, it's going to be another evaluation mode. I will say this. I don't care what happens the rest of the way. I am done deciding on Daniel Jones after this year. 
definitive one way or another, the Giants need to make it clear if he's their guy or isn't their guy by the end of this season. 877-337-6666. By the way, Hoff is back there. He's got... You know, he's obviously got the call screen, the phone. He's got a couple of laptops open. He's got the phone. He's, he's monitoring this. I I fully expect that uh, yesterday's move with the Giants, which was an amazing trade, a very forward-thinking home run trade. I loved when I saw that. I'm like, okay, the Giants are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now they need to keep doing it. So Hop's on top of all that. And what the Jets need to do is take a big swing. Call up the Raiders. I'm giving up a first-round pick. If it's a first and a fourth, whatever it takes to get Devontae Adams here, we you need to go for it. Otherwise, it is inconsistent with what you did coming into the season. All in with Rodgers. Rodgers is not here right now. Continue to be all in. 